This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Welcome back. In Islam, we often hear the saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that marriage is completing half your faith. Given the sacredness of marriage, we must ask ourselves, how can we ensure our marriages are strong and successful despite the rise in divorce rates these days? I have the pleasure of interviewing Hala Banani right here at the All Women's Conference, Being Me, to help us explore the topic of marriage counseling. Hala Banani has a master's in clinical psychology with 20 years of experience working with couples and individuals on a variety of issues, including marriage. She is also the host of her own TV show, With Hala, which combines principles of psychology and Islam to help people reach their potential. Let's hear more from her now on the topic of marriage counseling. Welcome to the show, Hala. Thank you so much for coming on. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I know you're, you know, you're definitely a pioneer when it comes to, you know, understanding marriage counseling uh, within your work. You have 20 years of experience. I'm just wondering, what kinds of issues do you get when it comes to uh, marriage counseling? Are you ready for this? Of course, I'm all excited. <laughs> all right. Well, it is, it is a spectrum of problems that I see. Sometimes it's just the daily disputes of uh, not being able to communicate, having in-law problems. Sometimes it's intimacy that seems to be a big problem and then other times unfortunately it could be infidelity it could be a lot of more serious issues now this is interesting your your the counseling that you target is for Muslim couples right but the issues that you're talking to me about are not are issues that I wouldn't think especially things like infidelity that are at like you wouldn't think they'd exist in the Muslim community. So I it know. is happening? It is happening, and it's happening with practicing Muslims, people who are praying, people who are going to the mosque. Unfortunately, we are not immune to this problem, and I think we need to stop sticking our head in the sand, pretending that our community is immune to this, because I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it on a daily basis where people have certain addictions, they have, um, they're following their desires, and unfortunately, it leads to a lot of issues. So we need and, to address it, yeah. And what kinds of, I guess, what kinds of advice do you give people? Because you have your own, uh, I, I know you have your own Five Pillars of Marriage course, right. and you work directly with couples as well. So how does that, walk me through how that works. The marriage program? Yes. Okay, well, this is this is our baby. My husband and I put it together, alhamdulillah. It took three years in the making. Oh, perfect. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so what it is, is um, it focuses on five pillars, right? And so the first one is self-development, on working on yourself. So whether you're married or not, you could get started on making yourself the person that would attract the individual you're hoping to get, right? And continuously working on yourself emotionally, psychologically, um, spiritually, in every aspect. So being having a sense of confidence as an individual Self -esteem, person. Self-esteem, absolutely. Because, and this is, I think, the missing link in a lot of other programs where the focus is not so much on yourself, it's just on the relationship, but you have to be working on yourself, right? And then the second is like on friendship, how to build this amazing friendship, because that is what makes marriages last through 40, 60 years, yeah. right? <laughs> and, so it's, and it's all about building that rapport, having quality time, how to make that person feel loved and special and a priority so that's pillar two pillar three is spirituality where your connection with Allah dictates how you treat your spouse how the fact that you're going to be accountable makes you be so cautious and you see your spouse as the way to Jannah so it's not just about if he's nice to me I'm nice to him it's about I want to please Allah bigger through purpose. exactly that higher purpose and then the fourth is conflict resolution which is knowing how to solve problems because most people don't have a clue, right? We haven't had yeah. examples. People either explode or they ignore, they act like a two-year-old. So we need to come up with mature ways to resolve the conflicts that we have. Well, and you're never mm -hmm. actually taught how to no. deal with conflict, whether you're in school or university, like that's not something. Exactly, right? and I always thought, you know, you, you need a course in any field you go into, but we don't have a course for um, how to have a successful marriage, and that's what motivated me. And the fifth pillar is on sexuality, because this is something, it's a taboo subject, um, and it's a lot of people have not learned about it from an Islamic perspective. They may get their information from other sources, but this is in an Islamic framework, and it's in the order for a reason, that you have to have each thing in order to to have that great relationship. And at what point, I know you said, you know, you've done marriage counseling for quite some time, and obviously mm -hmm. the course sounds very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. At what point in your career 
uh, did you decide, uh, you know, okay, I'm going to focus on marriage counseling? From the very beginning. From the very beginning. Yeah, from the very beginning. I think one of the, the first client I had was a serious marriage, <laughs> marriage problem that was going on. So from the very beginning, I've been treating uh, couples, and it's been a passion of mine, and doing premarital therapy as well. I do, like, Skype therapy sessions with international clients and and it's interesting because regardless of where they're from the problems are the same yeah. they really are and do you ever get uh, any uh, non-muslim couples as well um, for counseling purposes I've had non-muslim clients where it's someone from New Zealand um, and I was like what gets you to come to a Muslim female yes. <laughs> <Mahajaba from Exactly. laughs> and he had heard a lecture and he said it just it penetrated into my heart and subhanallah Loss. But as far as couples, I've worked mainly with Muslims. But inshallah, in the future, we can expand that. Well, it just <laughs> sounds like the issues are so you know relevant to Muslims and non-Muslims. So it seems like uh, only a natural. Right. Well, it was interesting because I did a series for Muslim Matters. It was like short little advice on marriage. And someone wrote in, it's like, you know, I'm not a Muslim. I don't even agree with the principles. <laughs> but this information, I feel like, really affected me. And I feel that it could be pertinent to anyone. So, alhamdulillah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, if there is one advice that you would give to our viewers who are watching, um, I guess, sorry, two pieces of advice. Okay. One who maybe is a newly married couple who's, you know, trying to, figure each other out mm -hmm. and surviving with each other and then maybe one piece of advice to people and I know personally a lot of couples who are going through um, very challenging situations right. and how do they uh, like want to keep it together what's okay. your the first advice is learning all about these skills right learn the skills learn how to prevent problems before you get into the marriage I think that's why it's so important some individuals come in for premarital therapy and I respect that so much because they're coming in they're in love they want to make it work and that's the best time to learn because you're you're motivated and you think this person land. yes love you love you there <laughs> and it's uh, it's a perfect time to learn and apply it so learn the skills learn how to prevent the problems before they occur. So. Now, I have to pause you here and ask. I've heard a lot about premarital therapy in an idea. What is it exactly? What do people, or what do you teach, rather, when it comes to premarital therapy? Right. So a lot of the same material that I cover in the five pillars of marriage, right? So it's about learning how to continuously work on yourself, learning how to um, come to an agreement, how do you come to a compromise, how do you prevent things from escalating. So it's like all of the, all of the, um, problems that may occur. I just had actually one of the volunteers said, you gave me advice last year right before I got married and it's, it's saved my amazing. marriage. <laughs> and I said, what did I say? He said, when, when it came to dealing with in-laws, you told me, lower your expectation to zero, you know, just lower it. And she said, I am now living with my in-laws and anytime I start getting, you know, worked up or upset, I remember that and it really calms me down. So knowing these things yeah. before you get into a problem, because usually when people come for therapy, it is, it's an ultimatum that they have given their spouse. You either come to therapy or I'm out of here, right? And it's like maybe 10 so years. So it's like on the verge of breaking. 10 years of baggage. And yes, we can overcome that. It takes a lot of effort, but not many people have the ability to forgive and let go, right? Yeah. So. At that point, as far as the, I think you asked the question about those individuals. Yeah, who are on the, in a situation where they're about to, on the verge of breaking. Right. Don't give up hope, right? Because I have individuals that wrote in, um, this one convert said that my husband has already written out the divorce papers. And they started, you know, watching the videos. They said, we only watched two or three videos. It's like we, we stopped the divorce, alhamdulillah. So don't give up hope. Yeah. You can change it. Even if you're the only one working on the relationship, because not, not everyone is motivated to go through the process. But if you're working on yourself and you change your mannerism, you change the way you treat your spouse, they're going to react to you differently. And so. how would you, that's amazing advice. Um, thank you for that. Sure. How would you, I guess as we wrap up, how, what would you say to, um, I guess, delineate some of the stigma around counseling? Because, I mean, to be honest, when you throw the word, oh, we need marital counseling, right. that's equivalent of saying we need help because we're so, that's it, we've given up. And you kind of don't go around publicizing, I'm seeking help. 
right. First of all, you don't have to publicize it, right? So of course. it's a <laughs> private issue. And I think the, um, the fact that it is a Skype therapy session, for a lot of people, it gives them the comfort that they don't have to walk into an office and they of see course. like five of their friends. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so the privacy is there, confidentiality is there. And something that I really respect is that um, many of the shiuch has, uh, have really evolved throughout the years. And they have come out and said the importance of seeking professional expert help. And they That's have even true. come out and said that they, they sought therapy. And I think that um, there's nothing wrong with it, right? I think if you have some kind of medical problem, if you're suffering from a heart disease or you have cancer, would you just ignore it? And what would you think of a person who doesn't deal with those medical problems? You would think, yeah. you know, you were being so negligent. Exactly. And yet, when we have these emotional issues, when we have, let's say, the depression or we have fights with our spouse, it's not going to just go away. It's like a toothache, right? That's true. The toothache is not, <laughs> not going exactly. away unless you address it. And when you address it, it's, it's so simple. It yeah. really is simple. So, you know, first of all, we shouldn't think about what others are thinking about us. You don't have to publicize it. And it seriously helps, right? I have seen people go from being suicidal to celebrating life. And so you don't have to suffer, right? It's just like... That's, um, such, a, that's such a positive note to end on. Thank you so much, Hala. <laughs> You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.